Ladies and gentlemen, Milwaukee County Executive Scott Walker. Great vice president, wouldn't he? Yeah. Well, looking out at this crowd, who wants to elect a real conservative in 2008? Anybody out there? Well, I'd ask you to join me over the next 50 days as we continue our campaign for county executive uh, right across the way in Milwaukee County. You know, back in 2002 here, here. and again in 2004, uh, the liberals in our area ran a, a couple candidates against us who campaigned as conservatives but we know would have governed as liberals. <clears throat> now in 2008, they have an unabashed liberal on the ballot. In fact, she's the vice chair of the state Democrats and a member of the DNC. <clears throat> this race will be a great contrast between a penny-pinching conservative, grassroots conservative, that'd be me, uh, versus a tax-and-spend liberal who's got connections to Madison. I prepared six, six straight budgets without raising the property tax levy from the previous year. And I'll do it. And I'll do it again and again and again. Who's the Baron County? <laughs> Maybe we'll annex how about that? On contrast, our opponent, she was actually one of the co-authors of the 15.2 billion, not million, but billion dollar tax increase that would have been the largest tax increase in our state's history. I want to give more tools to local law enforcement to fight crime. Our opponent, on the other hand, wants to send 17-year-olds back to the juvenile system where they don't have to face serious adult penalties. I want to expand opportunity for children to succeed in the school choice program. Our opponent has worked actively, actively, to kill school choice in Milwaukee. I want to change the status quo mentality that somehow says that government must either dramatically raise taxes or cut core services. I say that's a false choice. In business, you find a way to balance the gap between price and quality through a very simple concept. It's called innovation. I want to apply, dramatically apply, innovation to government and find better ways by contracting out services, by creating more partnerships, by eliminating bloated bureaucracies, find better ways to keep taxes low and the quality of our core services high. Those who defend the status quo, as you might imagine, don't like that kind of change. They want to go back to the days of higher taxes and limited accountability. The forces who hate us believe that it is their God-given right to have a liberal in charge of the government in our state's largest county. They've already committed publicly to spend more than a million dollars to defeat us. In fact, they've even brought in a shadowy outside group who hires people like the political hitman Todd Ronstadt. But we will over overcome those attacks, and we will lay out a clear plan, a plan based on the idea that government is here to serve the will of the people and not the other way around. Back in 1981, Ronald Reagan, whose birthday we celebrated last Wednesday, President Reagan was able to get tax cuts through a Congress even when the Democrats controlled the House of Representatives. He did it by taking it directly to the public. Before I took over county government, the tax levy was going up some 6% each year. And even though I presented budgets to freeze or even cut the tax levy, and then our county board eventually added some more tax levy even after my <coughs> vetoes, even after all that, the average annual increase in our tax levy was about 2% annually. What that shows to me is we took a page out of Reagan's playbook and took the message directly to the public and we're winning by changing the terms of the debate. Some might say that gives us hope for the future, but hope without a real plan is just a dream. I have a plan to make that dream a reality. Now. I need your help, not just those of you from Milwaukee or the Milwaukee area. I need the help of everybody in this room to make that plan a reality. We need to get that vision out to the voters. We can win with a conservative message in Milwaukee County of all places, but we need help in getting it out. You may have seen the orange flyers around that tell you how you can sign up here today, or you can visit our website at scottwalker.org.
need your help. We can win this election. Finally, I want to tell you why it's so important that we fight this battle. Each year I hold a series of budget briefings around the county to get some input from the public. One of those briefings, as you can imagine, I got a steady stream of union activists who came up one after another to the microphone to attack me. And after about an hour or so, a young woman came up to speak and she had a long legal pad full of notes. You can think, uh, of course, my reaction was, oh, what is she going to tell me not to cut? But then she started to tell me her story. Her name is Alma Linda Ramirez. She was raised in a family with a dozen siblings, and she was the first one out of all of them, the first one to earn enough money to purchase her own home. She now lives in a duplex on the south side of Milwaukee with her children. But she went on to tell me that over the past few years, the taxes on her duplex were going up so much more than the wages she earned at work. In fact, she looked at me at that moment, and with tears literally running down her face, she said to me, don't raise my taxes, or I'll have to sell my home. All Melinda's story had a powerful impact on me. Now, anytime I hear from some of the same protesters that many of you heard from last year at the state capitol, I think instead of all Melinda, and of all the other people like her and her family, all they want from their government is a chance to live their part of the American dream. We owe it to them and to all of you to make that dream a reality. Thanks for being out here today. Thanks for what you do to make that dream a reality. God bless you and have a great day.